Rome, where power and ambition clash. A tale of treasury and friendship we shall hatch. Julius Caesar, a leader of great renown, but envy and betrayal seek to bring him down. At the heart of the city, conspiracies brew, as Cassius and Brutus plot what they must do. Their loyalty, torn between friend and state, the Ides of March shall seal his fate. Amidst the turmoil of political deceit, Shakespeare's words render the tale complete. As the play unfolds, we'll witness the strife and be drawn into the standard story of life. In the grand city of Rome, turmoil and treasury are afoot. The mighty ruler Julius Caesar has stirred the ire of powerful men while the forces of ambition and betrayal lurk in the shadows. As the political landscape shifts and tensions mount, the fate of the empire hangs in the balance. In this setting tragedy, the character choices and allegiance will collide with cataclysmic consequences. Welcome to the distinguished world of Julius Caesar, where the stakes are high, the drama is intense, and the consequences are nothing short of earth shattering. Let's watch the captivating play with a twist. Wanderers of time to a tale spun from the threads of history. I am Calpurnia, a mere vessel carrying the echoes of a bygone era where the shadows of rebellion danced with the hopes of justice. In the twilight of an era steeped in the grandeur of Rome, the resonance of a name still stirs the echoes of history. Caesar, a colossus of ambition and power, whose fate was etched in the annals of destiny. Yet, in the throes of destiny, the mightiest can succumb to the blades of betrayal. The Ides of March bore witness to an act that ruptured the fabric of power, a theater of ambition turned tragic as the conspiring hands wielded the instruments of fate, forever altering the course of Rome. Here, within these walls, the timeless struggle between order and upheaval unfolds. It bridges two eras, revealing the consequences of rash actions and the potential for a different, more constructive path towards change. Join me! on this odyssey through epochs where the reverberating footsteps of the past and present seek to illuminate the cyclic nature of human endeavor and the futility of rebellion to establish justice, a paradox that echoes through the corridors of time. under the weight of deceit and broken promises. We can't continue to turn a blind eye to the injustices imposed upon us. It's high time we shed light on the hypocrisy of those in power. They speak of progress but feel us lies and empty gesture. If choked our voices, suppressed our freedoms, all were parading towards unity. But we won't succumb to their deception. We have the power of unity, the strength of our collective voice. Yes, John, it's time to unveil the charade and expose their facade to the world. We'll stand beside you, ready to echo your words until they reverberate through every corner of this city. Their illusion of control ends now. No more silencing our dissent. We demand transparency, not just empty slogans. Unity alone won't topple their balls of corruption. We need a plan, a strategy that pierces through their facade. You're right. 
we need to strategize, to unite, not just in voice, but in action. We must stand tall in the face of their tyranny. What's happening here? I have whispers of defiance and such determination in your eyes. We're uniting against the falsehoods and injustice imposed upon us. Our city deserves better than the deceit to endure. What's our next step, Alex? How do we make them hear us? Our next step is to rally the support of the people. Together, we'll build an unbreakable force that can't be ignored. We take this fight to the very chambers where decisions are made. I will speak in the council meeting. Come in. I have connections in the media. I'll ensure our story gets the spotlight it deserves. They've underestimated our determination for too long. It's time to face the consequences of the deceit. How can we ensure the masses stand behind us? We need to ignite their passion. Show them the injustices that have thrived in the shadows for too long. Let's organize a peaceful protest, a visual outcry that can't be ignored. We'll march into that chamber armed with the truth. But remember, it's not just my voice, it's our collective outcry that'll resonate within those walls. For once, and for all, justice, for all, project for our state are imperative for its progress. Our roads have long awaited refurbishments and the bridges, well, they're barely holding together. Indeed, sire, education too demands attention. Our school needs resources, books, teachers, facilities to nurture the minds of our future generations. And healthcare, your highness, the hospitals are stretched thin, lacking supplies and adequate staff. Our people suffer. They need access to quality medical care. Hmm, these are pressing matters. Once they cannot be overlooked, but resources are finite. How do we prioritize amidst such crucial needs? Your Majesty, the key lies in a balanced approach. We must allocate resources judiciously, focusing on projects that benefit the greater populace while ensuring sustainability. Absolutely, sire. Investing in education and healthcare lays the foundation for a prosperous future, and enhancing infrastructure facilitates smoother trade and mobility, fostering growth. Your Highness, it's about ensuring the well-being of our citizens. It's not merely about bricks and mortar, but about providing a better quality of life for all. Justice 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 for all. Is the meaning of this interruption? This ends now. You can't keep ignoring us. Your Majesty, forgive the interruption, but the people are desperate. These projects, while essential, shouldn't overthrow the immediate needs of citizens. We need action now. How dare you barge in like this? You sit up there, detached from the reality we face. Mind your manners, young one. This is a place of order. Order? Your so-called order suffocates the voices of the people. The ruler knows what's best for this realm. You have no right to disrupt our proceedings. Do you hear them? They're blinded themselves to our struggles. You're inciting chaos. We won't stand for this insolence. Enough. Explain your grievances, but do so with respect. Our homes are crumbling. Our families suffer. And you sit here indifferent? The ruler has plans in place for the betterment of all. We need action, not a diplomacies. You can't rush progress. It takes time and careful consideration. Time? People are hurting now, not in some distant future. You're disrupting the harmony we work so hard to maintain. Rome is not built in a day. Let us find common ground. We must bridge this divide. 
We need representation, a voice that echoes our struggles in these chambers. Hmm, I will consider your plea, but uh, this disruption cannot continue. Fine, but don't forget the spaces of those you serve. This behavior won't be tolerated again. The council shall reconvene later. Leave us now. None of us are leaving. We demand change and we demand it now. George, let's give them some time. Change takes time. Time? We've waited long enough. Their promises fall flat, just like the ones before them. Let's be patient. We'll talk with the government for reform, not revolution. Reform? You've heard that song before. It seems you've got tables and change sides. Friends, suffering isn't lost on me, but rash actions can lead to chaos. Am I advocating for a structured approach? Structure? It's bureaucratic stalling. Our patients wear stin while you play politics. Please understand, we're trying to navigate complexities to create sustainable change. Who cares for these high sounding words? It's immediate action that we're demanding. Together, we'll dismantle the illusion that builds around us. Stop! Stop! I said stop! Events. The soothsayer's prophecy weighs heavy on my mind, my dear Caesar. Ancient Rome, the realm of Caesar and Calpurnia, where whispers of destiny intertwined with the threads of power and ambition. How silly to find myself amidst these hallowed corridors of history. Your ambitions are noble, Caesar. But the people, they fear your unchecked power. The people's faith stems from misunderstanding, Calpurnia. I will envision reforms that will elevate Rome, grant freedom, and foster harmony among its citizens. Your vision is grand, my love. To every Roman citizen you give, to every several man, 75 drachma. Moreover, you have bequeathed them your walks, your private arbors and new planted orchids on this side of Tiber. You have given them to the Romans as common pleasures to walk abroad and recreate themselves. But amidst these aspirations, there are those who harbor enmity towards you. Let them plot and scheme. I've extended an olive branch even to those who see my odds with my ideals. My plans transcend personal advantages. Therefore, the greater good. Caesar, with his noble ambitions for Rome, such grand designs for a man of pride and power, it's perplexing how I wish I could make myself visible to them. Calpurnian, you speak of omens and foreboding dreams. Yet amidst these portents, there lies a steadfast soul in Rome, a man whose virtue transcends the shadows that cloak our realm. Who do you speak of, Caesar? 
Brutus, noble and principled, a man whose integrity roused the marble pillars of our temples. His loyalty to Rome is unwavering, a beacon of honor and a seer of ambition. You hold Brutus in high regard, my lord. Indeed, Calpurnia. Amidst the scheming whispers of politics, Brutus stands as a paragon of rectitude. His commitment to the greater good, an attribute there goes the aspirations are hold for all. The capital meeting this evening, should you not reconsider? Calpurnia, my destiny awaits me there. I shall tread cautiously, but I cannot hold progress out of fear. Rome needs this transformation, and I shall see you through. I shall take my leave now, but fear not. I shall return for the evening meeting at the capital. Noble Caesar, poor misunderstood soul. How I wish I could communicate with him and change history. There's a hope, Brutus, a noble soul amidst this realm of power. Must meet such a man. I yearn to witness the noble heart of Brutus, a beacon of honor amidst the tempestuous tides of power. Let me go to Brutus's house. Occupies my thoughts. I sense a storm brewing in your silence. Is it about Caesar, the conspiracy? I implore you, share your worries. Concealment only nurtures the darkness. You perceive rightly, Portia. The matter concerns Caesar and the dire path our noble Rome will tread if we remain silent. But divulging prematurely may bring more harm than good. I beg you, Brutus. Do not let fear of consequences shroud your noble intentions. Your words weigh heavy upon my heart, Portia. Brutus, noble and just, yet burdened by the weight of this decision. Welcome, friends. I have been pondering about our discussion deeply. The weight of such a decision is not one to be taken lightly. Brutus, we cannot delay any longer. Caesar's power only grows by the day. We must seize this moment. I do not doubt Caesar's ambition, nor the danger it poses to our republic. But should we act so hastily without absolute certainty? Brutus, there is no time for hesitation. We have rallied support. And the people look to us for deliverance from tyranny. Friends, your courage is unwavering, but we must tread carefully. This decision will echo through history. Let us ensure it resonates with the wisdom of justice, not the haste of impulse. Do this. We must act swiftly. The time is ripe for Caesar's downfall. The people yearn for liberation from Caesar's tyranny. We need your support, Brutus. What choice do I make? Is Caesar's ambition a danger to the Republic? Brutus, we implore you to consider the wealth of Rome. Caesar's hunger for power knows no bounds. We must act before it's too late. You, Brutus, 
You are the moral compass of our cause, Brutus. With your support, the people will rally behind us. But Caesar, he's not the trying to paint him to be. He's loved by the people. Love blinds them to his ambition. You, Brutus, are the only one capable of seeing the truth and acting upon it. Brutus, we deliberated. The age of March. It's an opportune moment. We'll approach Caesar under the guise of presenting a petition. Once we have his attention, we strike. We must prevent him from seizing absolute power. And we in will divert his attention while we gather around him. Tasca will initiate the first strike, then we follow suit. But to kill him in such a manner is the only way to save Rome from tyranny. It's sacrifice for a greater good. Yet, Caesar trusts me. He's been a friend. The friendship we hold for Rome is greater, Brutus. Brutus, this isn't the path to justice. Caesar deserves more than betrayal. Brutus, we need your courage and conviction. Roman's fate hangs on this moment. I shall meet you all at the Capitol meeting as agreed. We shall take a leave now. The decision is taken, Portia. The common consensus is to assassinate Caesar during the meeting inside the Capitol. Good heavens! Is it right to betray trust and friendship? This is really unfortunate. This should not happen. Oh Lord, provide me with form and words to prevent this catastrophe. What lights are these? They speak of good omen. Who are you, stranger? And how did you come to be here? My name is Alex, and I... I don't know how I got here. I was part of the rebellion in my time, fighting against oppressive rulers. But now, I find myself in this different era. A rebel displaced in time. Fate plays intriguing games. Come, let us converse further. You may have stumbled upon a twist in destiny, my friend. Brutus, consider Caesar's intentions. They might be more to this than what meets the eye. What do you mean? I happened to overhear his conversation with his wife Calpurnia. I realized he has noble ambitions for Rome. My love, the choices you make today will ripple through time. Choose wisely, not just for Rome, but for your conscience. What if my apprehensions have clouded my judgment? What if Caesar means well for Rome? To betray one for the greater good. Is that the path of honor? The bigger choice hangs heavy on my shoulders, my friend. My loyalty to Caesar is matched by my love for Rome. If only I could decipher the real threat. You hold the power to avert this crisis. Caesar trusts you. Speak to him. Warn him of the conspiracy looming over him. It's not too late to change the course of fate, Brutus. You can prevent a catastrophe by revealing the plot to Caesar. You both are right. I shall meet with Caesar and inform him about the impending danger. The quest for change bore the fruits of unrest, painting the canvas of this realm with hues of discord and betrayal. I yearn for a revolution that would usher in a brighter era, yet the aftermath reeks of despair and chaos. The path I chose led to bloodshed, deceit, and a betrayal of trust. What have I become? A harbinger of upheaval? A catalyst for strife? Leaving behind a trail of anguish and despair. If only I had foreseen the devastation wrought by my fervor. If only I could turn back time and mend the fractures of history. But my actions, now etched in the annals of time, weigh heavy on my soul. A somber reminder of the irreversible cost of rebellion. Please listen. I've experienced 
listening profoundly. I have traveled through time to another era, one torn apart by misguided rebellion. I have seen the devastation caused by upheaval and chaos. It's a path of endless suffering. We mustn't tread that path. It leads to darkness, not to the light of progress. We have seen the aftermath of unrest, the anguish, the strife. We have a chance here, in our time, to pave a different road. Alex, what you're saying, it's hard to believe. But seeing you like this, it feels like you've really been through something profound. I have, and it's changed me. I realized the true cost of the path I advocated for. The price was too high. But what other choice do we have? The system is broken. It's failed us time and again. I used to think the same. But there's strength in unity, in working within the system to make it better. We can't lose hope in our ability to effect change. It's risky though. You see what happens when we try to push for change peacefully. The system shuts us down. It's not about giving up. It's about strategic persistence. We can't dismantle everything overnight. But we can start, step by step. It's a different kind of rebellion, isn't it? One that doesn't spill blood, but demands just as much as courage. So what do we do now? We organize, we educate, and we engage. We find allies, build bridges, and advocate for the changes we see. We can make the system work for us. I think Alex is on something. Maybe it's time we reconsider our strategy. It's a shift, but if it leads to progress without the chaos, I'm in. We've always sought change, but maybe this is the way. Through unity, not upheaval. Come me in, come me in. Thank you, all of you. This isn't just my journey, it's ours. A shared commitment to a better future. Together, we tread this new path, step by step. Hmm, it's a little unconventional, but perhaps that's exactly what we need. Change without upheaval. Let's explore this together. For the betterment of our society, let's be open to new possibilities. Your experience has sparked a different conversation. We owe it to our community to consider it seriously. Thank you, all of you. This is just the beginning, a new chapter in a pursuit of a brighter future. It's a long road, isn't it? It is, but it's a road worth walking together. We'll stumble, we'll face setbacks, but if we persist, change will come. We can make a better tomorrow without tearing apart the fabric of our society. Let's strive for progress, for a brighter future, united in purpose. Let's all get ready to embark on this different but hopeful journey towards change. Bravo the drama